The Adobe Camera Raw offers correction of individual areas in a photo. If I look at the pre-processed, already developed JPEG from the camera, I see some rich blue in the sky. If I look at the unprocessed, undeveloped camera raw shot, I've already started to lose some of that blue, some of the contrast and detail. And when I correct it, I'll lose even more of that sky. So I'm going to double click on the camera raw, the .nef, to open the ACR, Adobe Camera Raw dialog. And I'll load the corrections I've made globally to this image. So if I go to the basic section of Camera Raw, which is your default, and choose Load Settings, I could select the house's correction. Now while this looks better overall, much more vibrant, rich yellow, I could see more of a light cyan blue, what I really saw when I took this shot. I've almost lost the sky completely. That's when the adjustment brush will let you paint back areas of the image that were captured in the original shot, but lost during correction. So if I select the adjustment brush, the default brush size is pretty large. So I'll scroll down in the adjustment brush settings. Once you select this tool, this changes from basic to settings that I'm going to paint in and adjust in individual areas of this photo. I always like the feather at 100 so it blends while I'm painting in the adjustments, but I'll make the size smaller. And it's okay if I overlap a bit, I will be able to erase in given areas. So I'm going to shoot for about 9. The smaller circle inside is where your hardness is really painting, and the dotted circle around the outside is that feather where it's blending or tapering the adjustment. So I'll start here in the upper left corner, and as I paint, you may have not noticed a change. If I scroll up, there was a small exposure movement. I want this darker, and I might actually go way too far, all the way to the end, so I could see where I'm painting. And look at all that detail that's in the sky that I might never have seen if I didn't have the opportunity to experiment with the adjustment brush. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to make this perfect, but I'll leave a PSD, a Photoshop file, in the folder of my finished correction. So I could make this look very dark and ominous, leaving it on this very dark adjustment. In order to clean this up a bit more, I'll finish my painting, and I'll zoom in, and I can just hit the plus in the lower left corner, and I'll use my wheel on my mouse to scroll up. Now I want to go from adding to erasing. And with erasing, I'll check my brush size again. Feather is high, but I'll do a smaller brush size. And here's a little power user trick. I can click once here to erase, move to the edge of the roof so the circle doesn't cross outside, hold down Shift and click again. And it erased from where I clicked first to where I Shift clicked again. And actually, my feather has gone away. I'm noticing a hard edge. So I'll dial that back up but maybe not 100 for this one. Maybe I want a little bit sharper transition so I could make cleaner lines. And I'll erase on the inside. Again, I'm not going to go for perfection. I'm going to go for progress. And I removed a little bit too much here, so I just hit Control-Z or Command-Z to undo. So I'm getting fairly close, making sure I'm getting most of those corrections painted away. I'm fairly happy with that roof line. I'll leave this for the moment. Erase into this roof line. Using spacebar to click and drag in different spots, I'm clicking once here, shift clicking at the end to connect the dots. Click, shift click. And I'll do a super small brush size, anywhere between one and three, to clean up the corners. But for now, I'll leave the corners a bit rough.
I do something I don't like, control Z or command Z, or edit undo. All right, so I'm going to fit in window control zero or command zero to fit in window to see my correction. And I can turn preview off and on to see just what I've painted in here before, after, a completely different shot. Now I'd intentionally gone too far, so let's come in and dial back the exposure. So I just want a richer sky, and that actually makes less cleanup work for the corners. But I don't need that completely artificial look. You can also do new adjustments. This street sign was important for me in the shot, the Calle de Bourbon, Bourbon Street, New Orleans. So I want to do a new adjustment brush. And I'll zoom in with Control Spacebar or Command Spacebar. And with the adjustment brush, I'm going to do a very small hard edge brush. So feather zero, size of two or three. And I'm simply going to paint starting here with one click. And notice it was on add. I'll undo and make sure it's on new. It was on new, but as soon as you do your first click, it switches to adding automatically. So I just wanted you to be aware of the three modes of the adjustment brush. I will shift click to connect the dots, click, shift click, and having that very dark adjustment really lets me see if I'm getting inside the lines here. So I'm doing click, shift click at every corner. A power user trick is I can hit my right bracket key to make the brush size a little bit larger, and now I can continue painting inside the sign with click, shift click at every corner, and then use a larger brush to finish it off. Now I'm going to go for the opposite effect here. I'm going to whiten the whites and improve the contrast to really make this sign paramount in the shot. So I'll slide up and move exposure up so it's really glowing. Maybe darken the shadows so I get more detail in the colors. Go really far with the contrast. And I'll dial exposure back down a little bit. There we go. Clarity is mid-tone contrast. I could even add some sharpening. And if I turn preview off and on, I've just made the sign more prominent. I could even oversaturate this, go farther with the saturation to really get a rich blue out of this. And when I hit Command-0 or Control-0, I've got two pins, the correction that was done on the sign. But when I do before and after, I see the adjustment for both. If I wanted to lighten up the sky some more, I'd click this pin. And it's handy that it shows a mask when I mouse over it, so I could see some areas I forgot to erase. So I can go back to Erase, erase a little bit more in here. There. I'm not missing too much. Maybe I missed a little bit up here. There we go. And now I'll make the exposure not so extreme. And I'll finish the corners on my own. I'm also going to use Content Aware Fill to remove this distracting car to really make a complete shot. So look in my folder for the final image. In the end, I ended up playing with exposure, contrast, and moving the highlights pretty far to make the white of the clouds pop, and played with the shadows to make the blue of the sky more prominent. I'm sure you could find a correction you're happy with on this sky, but we couldn't get there without Adobe Camera Raw's adjustment brush. And here we have our final corrected image with the distracted car removed using a combination of the patch tool, the stamp tool, and edit fill content aware to match up objects. Our adjustment brush painted in a richer sky and called more attention to the sign. Now watch carefully as we look at the pre-processed camera JPEG 
to see how uninteresting this shot is. Flat, dull, not vibrant. Corrected, distracting object removed, and selectively painted adjustments. So I hope you've enjoyed the adjustment brush and see where you can use this on your photos.